All right. At this time, the city will adjourn to a joint powers financing authority meeting, and that will be called to order. Now, uh, roll call. Chair Velasquez here. Directors Clower, Gomez here. Friend here. Solorio Luna. Present. Executive Director Avera present. JPA Attorney Sullivan here. Sergeant at Arms Westrick here. Authority Clerk Graves here. Thank you. Verification of agenda posting. The agenda for the City Council of the City of Hollister meeting of February 16th, 2016 and the Joint Powers Financing Authority of February 16th, 2016 was posted on the bulletin board at City Hall on February 10th, 2016 at 11.15 a.m. per Government Code Section 54956. Okay. We'll move forward to item A.03. Who is speaking on that? Good evening, Mayor, Council Members. Um, what you got in front of you today is uh, basically. No, think, are we talking are you, on the joint powers? Is that? Oh, yeah, no, it's Brett. Sorry about <laughs> Brett. <laughs> He's so excited. <laughs> yeah, wow. It's great that you knew the number, though. That's good. <laughs> yeah, I'm such enthusiastic employee. So. <laughs> you missed the, the zero oh, part. <laughs> so we're uh, we're here to ask for the council to uh, approve the approximately 80 million in wastewater revenue refunding bonds to procured by net revenues of the city wastewater enterprise fund to refinance the outstanding 2006 and 2007 wastewater revenue bonds. Uh, to give you a little history, we, the uh, finance authority uh, 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 issued $120 million in bonds uh, back in 2007, and then another $6 million uh, to re, uh, refund the 1993 bonds. And then since then, we have paid down 24, 20, almost $25 million of that principal which has saved over $42 million in total debt service payments. And uh, with this refinancing, it will save us over hopefully about a million dollars a year in debt service payments. Excellent job. Are there any uh, comment cards from the public? Uh, yes, sir. I have a uh, comment card from Marvin Jones. Thank you, Mr. Chairman and uh, council members. Uh, um, full disclosure, I've been guilty of changing um, monies in a credit card to get a lower interest rate, and that appears what you've been doing here, and I, and I appreciate that. I've done the same myself. But then when I was looking at some of the numbers there, in uh, 2006, you had the sewer bonds, which were fine. Uh, 2007, you had a little money left over, so you refinanced the 1993 bond, almost $7 million, and now you're going to refinance it again. And the only problem I have with this, if you don't refinance this within the next 25 years when the maturity date is, nice interest rate, 5%, can't complain about that. But if you don't refinance this again, that money you borrowed in 1993, you will have been paying interest on from 1993 to 2041. 48 years to pay off that 1993 bond. I do not know if that was 1993 was a refinancing of an earlier one or not. That information was not available in your package. But 43 years, 48 years, whatever it was, 48 years, that's getting close to usury. Uh, just a comment, again, I don't fault you going and getting a lower monthly payment, your lower cash flow, but eventually, uh, that's, that's a long time to pay off a debt. Thank you. Just so you know, we are aggressively paying down at any opportunity we have also. I have no more cards, Mr. Mayor. Uh, we have Mr. Snow. 
I'm sorry? I think I mentioned Marvin Johnson. I got a lot of credit cards. Now I put the years. Uh, and what, when, I, I know it's Harry going to be here today about the, about the, what we're doing too, good because, and we, and we give some that money, uh, how, how, how go back, one, like, bread right there, right in Wedgwick and you and, Council, uh, uh, and the bonds. Like um, I went last meeting, special meeting that we we uh, there's some agencies, right? Find agency that we're we can finance, but we can uh, lower the rate in uh, and say one point seven million dollars on. Finance, we finance and, and stuff like that. So, in on sewage bonds, you mentioned before one of the mean, did you guys some, be purchasing some thing at the the sewage plant for $1 million? Uh, want to uh, tell a little more about that? A little bit about that. Thank you. I, Sorry. Just so clarity of your question. Your question is you want to know how we're going to use the savings? The, the uh, strategy here is to, by having a lower amount that we're paying each year, we're going to turn back and pay down the existing, the remaining debt more aggressively over the next decade so we can reduce that payment or end that payment as early as we possibly can and use some of those dollars for some of the other improvements that are going to be needed in the near future. In mm -hmm. planning on how much we're pay paying down, uh, there's also a, pl the p a plan to pay down three and a half to five million dollars before this to help us even have even lower rates for hopefully in the future. Thank you. Do we have any other speaker cards? No, sir. Do we have any questions or comments from the council? Uh, Mr. Mayor, I just... Um, um, I just want to thank the staff and, and you as well, Mr. Mayor. I know that you mentioned this um, initially when you came on board to you know, look at every opportunity to, to refinance. So um, I appreciate the work that, that, that staff did to, to put this together. Obviously, any of this is going to be helpful for our cash flow purposes. And um, though I, 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 I agree with Marvin and... Um, you know, obviously it is a, a lengthy time period, but I'm sure we're going to do our due diligence to, <clears throat> excuse me, to make sure that um, we pay off uh, sooner. So thanks. Hmm. Uh, I appreciate the comment. And again, the idea here is uh, by having more dollars in that account, we can keep paying it down aggressively right. to end it much earlier than what is listed on the, uh, the contract. So thank you for all the work. And I, again, thank all the council members for uh, going ahead with it and making that happen. Thank you. Is there a motion? So move. Motion. Is the motion is second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Motion Thank carries. Thank you very much. At this time, we'll adjourn the Joint Powers Finance Authority meeting. Is there a motion? So move. move. Motion. Is there a second? All in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carries. All right. At this time, we are going to resume the uh, meeting of February 16th, 2016. Uh, Council Member Friend will lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance. Thank you very much. Roll call. Mayor Velasquez? Here. Council Members Clower? Gomez? Here. Friend? Here. Solorio Luna? Here. City Manager Avera? Present. City Attorney Sullivan? Still here. Chief of Police Westrick? Here. And City Clerk Grayson. Mr. Mayor, I will take this opportunity to say that Council Member Clower uh, notified the clerk that he had a conflict. He wouldn't be able to be here tonight. Okay. Verification of agenda <coughs> posting? Um, the one I read earlier. Um, 
covered okay. both. It covered both. All right. City Attorney, do you have anything to report out of the closed session meeting? <clears throat> yeah, report was given on the award homes decision entered last week by Judge Tobias and the uh, other matters that are at litigation with Benchmark Homes uh, the, and the county's appeal. Instructions were given. And then also a second piece of potential litigation where the uh, uh, council had presented to them uh, the opinion of the uh, engineering consultant to help with the FAA contract at the airport, some uh, issues relating to getting the FAA grant monies to pay the contractor because of depth of, con of asphalt and the density and the uh, threats by that contractor to sue the city for payment. And instructions were given and we will proceed to continue trying to negotiate that at your behest. Thank you very much. At this point we will um, do the installation of our new youth advisory committee. I want to thank Councilmember Friend and Councilmember Clower for working so hard to uh, bring us our young people to help us here in the city and we're looking forward to having them as part of our team in the near future and it's quite the team so we're very excited are you ready to do the oath call them up I am um, if we could please have uh, Faith Fernandez Lauren Flaherty Lauren Clower Faith and if you guys can stand right up here, I'm gonna line you guys up here. Angel Leo. Yeah, yeah then I'm gonna be down. Here. Max Ramirez Resendez. Carla Vasquez. And Monica Vasquez.
Congratulations to all of you. You are officially part of our city, and we're looking forward to hearing your ideas and having you guys implement them. Thank you very much. All right, we'll move forward with the with item A, consent resolution. Are there any items that council would like to pull? Yes, Mr. Mayor, I'd like to pull A3 and A6. A3 and A6, any others? Okay, sorry. We're pulling item A3 and A6 Okay. for discussion. Is there a motion? I'll make a motion that we approve the consent agenda Remainder. Hmm. All right. There's a motion. Is there a second? Second. second. Yeah. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion carries. We'll move forward to item A3. <laughs> <laughs> now, now it's you. Good afternoon. Everybody's good gone evening. now. <laughs> good evening, Mayor, uh, Council Members. Okay, so A3, what you have in front of you is. Um, a staff report on basically a name change and a little bit of the uh, authorization of the position to be um, more of a, a supervisory role. Um, what we're doing is we're going to keep um, uh, the F73 position as it is um, with the pay scale, but the job title and the job description are going to be more traditional to a battalion chief position. So in this department, what we have, if you go to the next slide. Um, I'll start off with this divisional responsibility so these are the items that it takes to run this fire department um, you've got an operations and training division logistics finance and admin and planning next slide currently that's the organizational chart of this department if you see where uh, you have the a B and C shift um, labeled that would normally be filled by a uh, battalion chief but right now what we have is a division chief chief Alvarez running two departments of the city, the fire, the fire Prevention Bureau and the Code Enforcement Bureau, uh, Code Enforcement Department with two personnel. Um, also with that, both Chief Alvarez and myself tried to manage the 42 personnel under uh, that block. If you look at it as an industry standard, you're looking at about uh, span of control between three at some times and as much as um, 42 people. So at a large scale event, we would have a lot more personnel on the ground than we do have management. Next slide. Um, here's a comparison in the model of uh, Hollister Police Department. This is what they have currently as a police chief, uh, a police captain, and two lieutenants. Right now, um, because of the short staffing that Chief Westrick has, he can't promote a sergeant to the lieutenant rank 
in special services until he has more people in the bottom. Once that happens, then he's going to have two lieutenant positions. The lieutenant positions are equitable to our battalion chiefs. They provide the same level of um, developmental support. Um, they're a supervisory uh, role, they, and they manage um, um, patrol. Um, if you see, they got detectives. They have uh, school resource officers training, uh, a community service officer, and a multi-service officer. And what that does is it provides the, the frontline troops with a level of uh, management and support so they can uh, develop in their careers and step into the roles ahead of them. Next slide. This is the organizational chart that I intend to do if I get the uh, battalion chief position, when I get the battalion chief position. If you could see, you have um, the three separate operations. And yes, I took a page um, from when I was uh, in Afghanistan. In a, ta in a tactical operations center, this is what you have running operations for uh, your forward observation bases. You're going to have the operations division, your planning division, and your logistics division. The, the unity of work is going to be cross-level among them in order to get the day-to-day -day work taken care of. Uh, if you go to the next slide, this is the Fire Prevention Bureau. It's standalone. This is, this is another department within our department that carries out um, support to the community with the fire prevention, uh, life safety inspections, and everything you see in the bullet points and in the code enforcement position where you have the municipal code enforcement, substandard housing, and everything else that comes along with code enforcement. So Chief Alvarez has his hands full, along with having over 42 personnel to manage. Go ahead, sir. No, it's going to be one step up. So you'll you'll have the fire chief myself, then the division chief, which in all intents and purposes is actually a deputy chief. So he would be the fire chief in the fire chief's absence. He can make the command decisions without asking permission to, because that's the kind of management and, and level of um, supervisory support that we want in this department. If something happens to me, any one of those folks should be able to step into the position of the chief rank and conduct business. So this is the proposed uh, Hollister Fire Department organizational uh, chart where you have the fire chief, the division chief, A, B, and C uh, shift with the battalion chiefs overseeing the captain's ranks. So this is what it looks like in a peacetime garrison um, posture. Next slide. This is what it's going to look like when we're uh, fighting a structure fire. You'll have 16 people on the ground, one chief officer, and everybody doing their assigned tasks from ventilation to fire attack to rescue to water supply a backup and the rapid intervention team. In the event that somebody goes down in the building, we can send two more people in there to pull the firefighters out safely. Um, next slide. Questions? Any questions? It, that prompted thought? me to ask that. <laughs> no question. Just a comment. For transparency purpose, I pulled it. And I'm glad to see your presentation because I felt that a lot of other people needed to see this. Mm -hmm. and, and I congratulate you on that and um, I think it's wonderful that what you're doing and, and uh, all the department and whatever they do you know I mean for the city for the residents and the safety of our community so thank you very much chief and I'm glad for the presentation you yes ma'am thank you I, I I'm, I'm only the mouth the mouthpiece to these guys they're the ones who do all the work I hear presented to you thank you council member friend Excuse me, council member friend, could you turn your microphone on? Okay. Thank you, sir. You really want to hear what I have to say. Uh, uh, and I agree with, with Councilman Luna that uh, uh, what you're doing is, is outstanding. My question is, the way I understand the new flow chart that you have, you're actually going to have a battalion chief on each shift? Yes. Yeah, so so what you'll I, have the assistant chief and he'll have the three battalion chiefs over the captains that are running the rigs. Correct. So Ma okay. Managing that span of control. And, and I, I, would, I would defer from calling him the assistant chief because an assistant chief is a guy who holds the door open for me or answers the phone. And this guy ain't that guy. I've seen him do it. <laughs> okay. <I know>. Yeah. <laughs> he brings the donuts to the meetings. I know. Oh, here we go. I'm getting called um, in the donuts um, again. <laughs> Okay, and I, I just wanted that explained that you're going to have each shift they'll have a battalion chief. Yes. So you'll have at any one fire scene, you're mm -hmm. going to actually have 
a line officer yes. responding to that. So it's not not necessarily has to be you or the assistant chief that has to be. Yeah, and 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 with that, we will we will certainly show up and be the incident commander. Those chiefs, the battalion chief position, once they show up, they're going to manage the operations because they're going to be right there when the event happens, or at least five minutes after the event happens, and they're going to start um, directing strategy and tactics. Turn to us, and then we'll provide them the resources they need to fight the fire, work on the flood, the collapse, the rescue, everything that comes with uh, mitigating an incident. Well, it makes it a lot easier on the captain that then can do their job. They don't have to take incident commander. You're going to have a battalion. Exactly. Team, saying, so. Exactly. I, I think it's a great idea. Thank you. Excellent. You're doing a great job. And for clarity for Councilmember Friend, donuts are the police. <laughs> Bagels or fire department, right? Well, whatever you <laughs> say, Mayor, sure. we got it. <laughs> Donuts the police chief shows up with. The fire yes. department, you yeah. have to show up with anything. Anyway. Do we have any speaker cards? Uh, yes, sir. I have, uh, let me turn on my microphone. Um, I have uh, uh, a speaker card from Keith Snow, but I'm wondering, Mr. Snow, if you still want to ask your question? Yeah. Okay. Well, I I like what I hear right now, but we're really fencing, like, and that the fire chief came from uh, Wattsville. But I knew Iris for years uh, since I've been here. Uh, in that, in that, he's a marshal, but I know that when Michael Carr before. So, who's, like, who's in charge? I see what you got there. I see how the cavalry, I, I prioritize the it. But like, who is the boss? Because for a fact that uh, you're a fire chief, right? Paris is the uh, the marshal. I like arson, like I like the things that uh, uh, Michael Cohen do. Look into that's a found that he has blow can I charge more than you. So in who's a I mean I like I'm one more fire first and I want more peace officers and I'm for that. I I I like how I got doing this and what uh, the things uh that C Marriage gave me before the list. But I know that we're less and we're for for I wanna know like like now the mayor saying, should you get a plan like how we'll go about and us trying to save money? The because I feel that you guys, should, you know, I feel you guys should get more money. The why seeing what city manager gave me uh, on like a computer. Thank you very much. Thank you. Did you want to answer anything? Well, so so to, to answer the question, sir, what I have is um, I, I, I'm the department head for fire. Um, my my chiefs work um, in separate functions. The the face that you see on a regular basis out in the community is, is Chief Alvarez. He, he is the fire marshal, and he's the one that's closer to the community. Um, the, the division or the battalion chiefs, once they're in place, they'll be working mainly with the troops. Thank you very much. Did we have another speaker card? That's no, it? sir. All right. <clears throat> Is there a, any other questions from council? Comments? Motion, motion? To, a motion, motion to make approve. a motion that we approve A6. There's a second. motion and a second. Second, yeah. All in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carries for O vote. Move forward to item A6. Good evening, Mayor, Council Members. Um, what you have before you tonight is a supplemental appropriation for $25,000 out of the um, Park Improvements Fund to uh, go ahead and construct a dog facility out at Clower Park. Um, any <coughs> questions about that? Councilman Lynn? Yes, I had pulled it. Um, and just, just as a reminder, you know, I appreciate the fact that, you know, we will, we do have uh, dog parks and I do want to remind everyone that we are still working on parks in the community and I know that on the west side there's still a need to fulfill uh, exactly where those park what we're going to achieve with those parks so as much as I 
support this. I still want to bring up the fact that we still have work to do with the parks and um, I am concerned about the west side completing the goals in achieving that goal of the park. Yes, ma'am. Those, those capital improvement projects on the west side were turned into the engineering department and we're awaiting the capital improvement budget before we can proceed on them. Okay, well, I'd like to request a, a report possibly at the next board, uh, city council meeting as to where we're at. Okay. That. Right? Okay. Council Member Gomez? Uh, yeah, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, first of all, I just want to uh, um, just, um, just vocalize my support for, for this. Um, over the years, it's been obviously a tremendous concern in my district and in, in the Sunnyfield Village area. Um, folks thought it was a park, then it wasn't than it was and then it wasn't so um, you know I think these investments are, are a good uh, signal to um, obviously our investment into our local parks um, I know this is I know he's not here but I did speak to Carson about this I know obviously for uh, for um, for good reason it's obviously very important to him and his family as well so um, uh, anyway I just wanted to um, just throw out my my support for this and, and thanks to have for um, uh, for moving forward with this Thank you very much, Vice Mayor. Uh, Council Member Friend. <clears throat> well, I I want to put out my support for dog parks, for the West Side parks, but I don't think it's appropriate to spend twenty five thousand dollars on a dog park when we still have a park like Park Hill that doesn't even have restroom facilities, and we're going to go on and move on to doing another park. We haven't finished the job we started up there. You want to take $25,000, put it in the, path, the bathrooms up there at Park Hill. Uh, it just doesn't seem make sense to, to move on to another project when we haven't finished the other one. Well, just uh, a reminder that we are going through all the parks. We're looking at McCarthy to get that improved. Calaveras needs to be improved. Come back around to take care of the, the bathrooms up there. Then we're talking that's a more of a $100,000 project. So. All those are, we're going to come around, and the goal was we all uh, focused on it last year. We committed to it is making sure every park in the city has their improvements because the public deserves them. And I'm, I'm glad to see we got to this point. Uh, this has been a conversation for a few years, a little longer than we had hoped. And hopefully by the end of this year, we'll have all those parks completed because Councilmember Friend is correct. The uh, bathroom situation up there is not in the best condition but we have made a good start with the improvements out there and I'm looking forward to hearing as Councilmember Lunar requested some of the uh, information now where we're at with planning on completion of McCarthy and Calaveras is very important those have been sitting out there for quite a while and they need their improvements also uh, this this item McCarthy and Calaveras were all submitted for the capital improvement budget I agree, but not, it's just like saying we're going to build a dog park and two months later we're going to come back and say, oh, now we need a fence. Or, oh, now we need a gate to get in there. Uh, wait, let's finish something before we move on. Uh, well, I, well, I, I, think, I, think the, I think this will give us enough to, to complete what's an existing, already an existing the park is already developed. It's not like this park is going through a full-on um, uh, overhaul, a complete overhaul of the park. We're looking to add to an existing facility. And um, and I agree, actually, I agree with both Councilmember Luna and Councilmember Friend, and, and the mayor and I had this discussion um, offline that we need to continue to to um, invest in our parks. And in and and, and no way are we uh, spending $25,000 and somehow punting other uh, other projects out there and um, and and second uh, I'm pretty confident that staff could work on more than one project at a time thanks and I'd like to add to that uh, is uh, councilmember friend and I brought back some information at one of the uh, League of Cities conventions about the bathrooms they can put in very reasonably priced uh, very quick to get done and I think that's the point he's making here is that we brought this back a year ago we need to see progress on it we need to finish these parks this year we're all committed to wrapping up this park program so the public can enjoy it and 
uh, the sooner we can see the information back be better for the whole community councilmember luna yes and uh, mr mayor and actually what is important the updates give us an update when you talk about going to the league of california cities conference i believe that was back in may or somewhere around that time and yet we're still talking parks and we're now we're talking another dog park which is it's not that we're in opposition of that so much but the matter of the fact is that you know we've got spring coming up we've got summer coming up we have children all over this community all the city but we need to make sure that those parks are there for the the community to enjoy i that's why i'm asking for a, an update in the report okay so are you just so i'm clear i i will bring an update back on the parks and that's what you want an update on not on the cip program you can bring them on both that would be great okay thank you i might drag david up here for the cip program because it says okay <laughs> do we have any speaker cards no sir yeah mr stone I mean, I'm, I'm for dogs. Uh, depends on dogs. Uh, it's a lot of great. We have a dog shots, baby eels, all that. So I prefer uh, not have a dog no more. Especially my landlord can't have a dog. That's on the contract. But I know back up on League in Sacramento County for a sick government. Uh, but one thing that we did do was uh, make us in our goals, priorities. And the one thing too, uh, uh, she right the queue, because I was missing that, I said a little more time up up a common guard. Uh, instead of using uh, me half of that money for that fence or whatever, and showing up four fives over there, the dog part we have, these by the airport over there, uh, that we should use half of that money for the kind of for summertime for our kids to for swimming pool. That's a so, different topic, Mr. Snow. All right, and I'll just give an idea. Thank you very much. All right, well, thank you, to you, sir. And for the future, as you know, please fill out the comment card before the topic comes up. Thank you very much. Thank you. Is there a motion? Uh, so motion to approve resolution 2016. 15. The motion is there a second? second? Second motion, second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Against? Yes. Yeah. Motion passes. 3 1 vote. Public input. This portion of the agenda is where the, a member of the public may address the City Council relating to any matter within the City Council's jurisdiction that is not on the agenda. If the subject relates to the agenda item, the speaker should address the city council at that time when the item is considered. Oral comments are limited to three minutes per person with a maximum of 30 minutes per subject. Speaker cards will be available at the council chambers and are to be completed and given to city clerk prior to discussion. When the city clerk calls your name, please come to the podium, state your name for the record and speak to the city council. Please note that state law prohibits the city council from discussing or taking action on any item not on the agenda. Do we have any speaker cards? Mr. Mayor, I do have a, um, a couple speaker cards. The first one is Mr. Keith Snow. I got the, uh, this is a little, little comment there, but uh, what, what, what's been happening is the lot of feedback here, and I would call the nick over there the cat chance. Uh, but the walls, when they clean up, he said, I need to do that dance over there at, over there at the cat chance. We need, we need better focusing on the here the campaign, I'm here as a citizen, and, and for my community. Uh, I feel again, I'll say over again. I thought a rubber race over the county. I thought they got that I can today, and but they are not the rest, right? That we need a people's committee. Um, for the youth committee, what you guys did, 
We already Point. spoke on that item, please. And and under the bond, I'm talking about again, People's Committee. And I was wondering if you put that agenda and want me and want to do like a, a resume or like a I do do on the committee. I want to create a appeals committee. PR City so has a voice in the city. Then it's uh, resolutions, resolve by solutions. Right, a lot of things in the city. I feel that uh, on the recent great revenue, when I want to talk about what's in the paper, paper, the figures, L, I would you put uh, what it was said. I want to put the right address to you. Uh, I wasn't, uh, what was the false accusations? I went by what you said, $2,001 on your business. So I want to address that to you because I felt very insulted. I duck on the freelance newspaper. It's wrong what you guys did. I'm here to give false accusation. I'm very experienced in being, being our new I run one of the companies. And I coordinate things. And I know about cream revenue. And then which can I say when I'm in 2012. I know about the federal guidelines. And we're going to talk again. So I do do things on public common card. So the point is right. Uh, there's another, another one there. So w what we need to do, and we need to corner our seat a little bit better, because with the end of the DRJ points, we should not spend our money and the cuts. I need a very good because we should cut the contract with Thank the- you. Thank uh, you very much. Thanks. Thanks for Marty Richmond. Good evening, Mr. Mayor, uh, members of the uh, City Council, Marty Richmond from Hollister. I recently wrote an article, I hope you read on Benito Link, called You Can't Do uh, Long-Term Commitments with Short-Term Money. Pretty soon, uh, Measure E, you're going to start talking about renewing Measure E or a new measure, whatever the number is going to be, or the letter. And I'm very concerned that five years is not going to be nearly enough. We're, we're ten years into this program now. And we haven't made a dent, really, in the revenue side of it. We would have to more than double our sales uh, figures to come up with what we're currently getting out of Measure E. If, if, if you want to make a commitment to, to, to doing it, I think you're going to have to go out 20 years. And that's a long-term commitment. It, yes, you start with five years of the, to assure the public that it gets done. I opposed it the first time when it was Measure T because I didn't like the plan. When it was Measure E, I supported it because I thought the plan was better. And now I'm looking at the revenue side of what you got coming in, and it's just not there. There's a million reasons for it. I could talk for hours if you'd let me. Can I get you to agree to let me talk for hours? No, no. chance in it. Okay. I could talk for hours about uh, the property tax uh, uh, agreement about how little we get out of that. I could talk for hours about the sales tax issues and why we're not getting what, what many communities are. And I could talk about, you know, the price of gasoline dropping to, you know, kill the gas tax issue. It's all, it all adds up. The answer is, when you look at it, I don't see how you can survive without that additional tax money. I mean, it currently makes up 23% of your um, general fund budget or something like that. That's an enormous number. Uh, when you start looking at where you're going to be, um, you know, and nothing would thrill me more to get up here and say, let's get rid of it because we're doing really well. The truth of the matter is the revenue is just not there. We don't get the revenue. I mean, we've got one general fund, and it, it's pretty low. It's nine, With the Measure E, it's $19.5 million. That is, figure that out per resident. That's not much money. Yeah, we got a million funds uh, under that. And they all got restrictions galore. Some of them only got five bucks in them. Some of them have a million and a half bucks and been there for 10 years because nobody wants to touch the money because the, 
the, the, the amount of paperwork that comes with it is so onerous, okay? That's money from the state. Uh, and though, with all those restrictions, it's really difficult to do anything. The general fund is the only one that basically is restriction free. And that's where this money goes. So I hope you'll consider it 20 years, and I hope I'm not scaring anybody by saying it. But I, like I said, I'd like to get rid of it, but I don't think we can. Thank you for your time. Thank you very much. I have no more cards, Mr. Mayor. Thank you. We'll move forward to item D1, city manager's report. I have nothing to report at this time. Thank you, sir. <coughs> we'll move to item E1. At this, on this <coughs> item, I will abstain from voting or discussion. I've had a uh, working relationship with the uh, developer owners of this property, so I will pass the gavel over to Vice Mayor Gomez. Thank you, Abraham, please go ahead. Sure, thank you, Mr. Vice Mayor. Members of the City Council, good evening. The applicant is requesting the City Council to consider a proposal to pre-zone 4.71 acres consisting of 14 parcels in the R3 MPZ, Medium Density Residential Performance Overlay Zone, and this is for future annexation into the corporate limits of Hollister. As you know, there's already a <coughs> project uh, going on at this time, uh, if you've driven by there, but this is a request to uh, pre-zone for annexation. Because pending approval of the pre-zone by the City Council for this site, staff will then forward the ap application to LAFCO for review and consideration of the annexation. LAFCO requires that the site first receives a pre-zone approval from the City Council, which is why we are here before you tonight. The site is located, as mentioned, north of Buena Vista Road between Line Street on the west part and Almond Court on the east, as you can see in the aerial that we provided on the screen. On April 2nd, 2014, the city, um, the San Benito County Planning Commission a approved a mitigated negative declaration pursuant to CEQA for the 4.71 acre project site for below market rate residential dwelling units, so for affordable housing. On April 15th, 2014, the San Benito County Board of Supervisors adopted an ordinance approving a zone change petition to rezone the property from ag productive to residential multiple and facilitate construction of 13 two-story buildings with a total of 80 below market rate apartments. However, the project has since changed to 13 single family lots and one lot for multifamily residential for approximately 41 apartment units. So it's gonna be a total of 13 single family homes below market rate and 41 multifamily below market rate apartments. All of the proposed res residential units remain at a below market rate. On July 21st, 2014, the City of Hollister City Council approved Resolution 2014-148, approving a memorandum of understanding between the City and CHISPA for the City to provide extended services outside of its jurisdictional boundaries to the property with the requirement that the property gets annexed into the City of Hollister prior to the issuance of the Certificate of Occupancy for the first residential unit. On December 21st, 2015, the City Council of the City of Hollister adopted Resolution Number 2015-223, approving the initiation of pre-zone for the property. And last month at the January 28th Planning Commission meeting, the Planning Commission adopted Resolution 2016-2, recommending to the City Council approval of this pre-zone. The applicant is now requesting pre-zone approval from the City Council for the annexation of the territory. With this, staff recommends that the the City Council hold a public hearing, read by title only, waive full reading and introduce ordinance number 1125, an ordinance of the City of Hollister to amend title 1724250 of the, of the Zoning Code of the Hollister Municipal Code to pre-zone the property for annexation, and schedule a second reading and adoption of the ordinance for the March 7, 2016 City Council meeting. Any questions for staff? Um, if it's okay, can, can I just go ahead and open up the public hearing and then we'll come back? Sure. Okay, great. So I'll go ahead and open up the public hearing if the applicant or if uh, anyone from the public would like to speak on this item. Okay. City Clerk, do we have any speakers on this item? Yes, sir, we do. Um, Keith, Keith Snow, who asks, tell me more about this item. No, no, I say it like that because I like the idea a little more detail. But 
I figure, yeah, I mean, you know, okay things anyway. But when we went on the money, uh, special meeting uh, about our plans and goals, and that, had you said right there, um, Vice Mayor, right, and these guys said, I feel, I mean, I'm for development, I'm for growth, I'm for sell tax, where not all of that, and the goods for, uh, oh, it's about schools, school tax for schools, it's our future, I mean, fun like that. But is that to you guys' decision? Because they're like anything else, it's getting okay anyway. I mean, I don't know what plans you guys made deals, but I did similar kind of deals like that. Can we say thing, one thing, do what you gonna say. But one thing is you can do anyway. And I've worked for the development and growth and all that. But how our city, how our traffic control, I'm not seeing nothing like that. Because for a fact is I went all this week, last week out of town. It's horrible. So once you go ahead, okay, these developments, so I want Patisa here in the city. You guys better have a better plan. And the traffic control, that's not what, that's my own concern. I'm for a set of impact fees. I will, me, I'm waiving, I'm, I think it's waiving impact fees, because I'm for the developers, the developer city. But how things are, how, how we even do things in the city, is it, I want you for a change. And it's up to you, you're the city, you're the council. So thank you very much. And, God bless you. Any other speakers? Yes, sir. Uh, Marty Richmond. Good evening again. Marty Richmond from the Hollister. I just wanted to ask a question of staff and, uh, so I can take my answer sitting down. Uh, we talked about anything we were going to annex that we were going to make sure it has a comprehensive um, community uh, uh, facilities district to cover the costs of servicing uh, these communities. Uh, can the staff inform if this arrangement is going to have a comprehensive facilities uh, uh, community facilities district? Thank you. And we'll have staff answer that after the we closed. No more cards, Mr. Anybody Vice else from the public want to speak on this item? Yep. Good evening, council members. Gabriel Torres from Chispa. Um, again, I appreciate uh, the council reviewing this uh, uh, item to this evening. Uh, just a little information on, on the development itself. The 41-unit apartment complex is currently under construction. Um, the 13 single-family homes that we have uh, uh, called out on this development, uh, Chispa being a community nonprofit organization, our goal with these 13 homes are to, uh, in, on a number of these homes, we are hoping to have set-asides. Uh, and when I say set-asides, we are looking at the general plan document that lists the uh, largest employers within San Benito County offering a home to more likely the top six employers, where that be the school district, the hospitals, city, county, uh, some of the larger growers. And we will have homes set aside for specifically for those employers to try to maintain local homeowners. Uh, and that's the goal of Chispa, to provide homeownership opportunities. Um, and as long with that, I, I am proud to say with the construction of the 41-unit apartment complex, more than 50% of the contractors uh, that we have working on this job, work will be working on this job, are, are from San Benito County. So unlike a lot of the developers that come into our community that are bringing folks out of area, uh, it's our mission, our goal to bring local talent to these developments. And this is just one of several that we hopefully have in our pipeline uh, for the near future. Um, so again, I want to thank the uh, council for reviewing this item this evening, and hopefully we can move forward with uh, some really fantastic developments. Any questions? Great. Thank you, Gabriel. Um, yeah, go, go ahead, Council. I just have a quick question. Mm -hmm. Sure. On the 13 homes, the individual homes. Yes. Are they going to be 
for the lack of a better term, the sweat equity type? No, these are not sweat equity homes. Uh, these will be full contractor built homes. Okay. So they will move a lot faster than they would but, using but sweat equity. they will still be in the, in the uh, uh, below market rate. Well, these are, these are going to be below market rate. Uh, they're at, uh, we're calling them our moderate income homes. So we're addressing those folks that are, are below the 80% of a, uh, area median income, uh, which is currently uh, for a family of four, 81,000 per year. So. Uh, you have families that are many families who are right at that 81,000 that cannot afford the half a million dollar homes that are being offered right now starting and Excellent. these homes. Excellent. Mm -hmm. yeah, great. Thank you. Any other questions for Gabriel? Yes, I have a question. Um, Gabriel, I know in the report it states about uh, with 80 below market rate apartments. Just for clarification for the public, mm -hmm. can you explain that? Sure, for the for the 41 unit apartment complex, with based on the funding that we've received for this uh, development, we will have folks at 60 percent of area median income uh, and below. So we are targeting, you know, if you looked at the uh, income level, I wish we would have the income level sheets here, but anybody at 60 percent of area median income is more than likely in the $40,000 uh, annual uh, <coughs> earnings and below. So we have a good range of those. Uh, income earners. So right. it is not a farm worker. Uh, we do have several units that are set aside for uh, uh, homes that for people with uh, physical disabilities. Uh, so we have more of the uh, ADA units within our development that would normally be required only because we were able to, to utilize some funding that was targeted to uh, folks with uh, ADA needs. Thank you. And that's what I wanted the public to hear. Yep. Thank, Thank you. you. Great, thank you. Any other speakers? Okay, no, we'll go, go ahead and close the public hearing. And Abraham, if you could just maybe uh, follow up on Marty's question. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you. Um, yes, even um, as, as part of the presentation, we mentioned that um, there was a memorandum of understanding between the city and Chispa to um, have Chispa proceed with the development in the county with the understanding that, that the um, Chispa annex into the city of Hollister prior to the certificate of occupancy of the first unit. And in that memorandum of understanding, um, there was a, a statement in there that indicated that once they annexed, they would be subject to the communities facility districts ap applicable. And so they are gonna be subject to the communities facilities district number two and number four. And we're gonna come back before you um, pending the approval tonight on the next city council meeting for the second reading also uh, to streamline. We'll also uh, um, present a resolution, and in that resolution, uh, it's going to be basically a development agreement indicating that, not a development agreement, but an annexation agreement, and in that, it's going to indicate again that um, the project will be in the Communities Facility District number two and four. Great. Thank you, Abraham. You're welcome. Um, any other questions? Okay. Thank you, staff. We appreciate the uh, report. So the staff recommendation is to uh, read by title only and then also um, uh, ordinance 1125 and then also schedule a second reading and adoption of the ordinance for March 7th. Do we have a, a motion? So moved. Second. Motion and a second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries 3-0. We'll move forward now to item E2. Thank you. The applicant is requesting the City Council to consider a proposal to pre-zone a 37.28 acre site as a prerequisite for annexation of the, city, of, of the site to the City. No development is being considered tonight. Pending approval of the pre-zone by the City Council for this site, staff will then forward the application to LAFCO for their review and consideration of the annexation. However, LAFCO requires that the site first receives a pre-zone approval from the City Council, which is why we're here before you tonight. The site is located along the north side of Buena Vista Road between Carnival Drive and the west of Miller Road to the east. Thank you, Joe. As you can see, this project is just west of the Chispa project. And the City of Hollister City Council authorized the initiation of this pre-zone application at its regular City Council meeting of October 21st, 2013. 
A mitigated negative declaration was prepared for the pre-zoning of this property in accordance with the California Environmental Quality Act, and it was circulated for 30 days for public review period. Last month, on January 28, 2015, the Planning Commission approved resolutions number 2016-3 and 2016-4, recommending to the City Council the approval of the mitigative negative declaration and the approval of, these, of this pre-zone. With this, staff recommends that the City Council hold a public hearing, adopt resolution number 2016-16, adopting the mitigative negative declaration for this pre-zone and approving the mitigation monitoring and reporting program, and also read by title only, wait for reading and introduce ordinance number 1126, an ordinance of the City of Hollister to amend title 1724250 of the Zoning Code of the Hollister Municipal Code to pre-zone pre the property for annexation. And finally, schedule a second reading and adoption of the ordinance for the March 7th, 2016 City Council meeting. Are there any questions for staff? Any questions from council? No questions? This time I'll open it for a public hearing. Do we have any speakers? Uh, yes, sir, we have one card, Doug, Doug Ledebar. I'm sorry about the pronunciation. You did very well, actually. Thank <laughs> you. Uh, Mr. Mayor, members of the City Council, my name is Doug Ledebor. I'm here representing KDH Group. Uh, we're not the property owner, but we do have a contractual interest in the Borelli property, which is one of the two parcels uh, shown on your screen there. I wanted to thank the Planning Commission as well as staff for the recommendation uh, to the City Council this evening. <laughs> And I also uh, wanted to bring to your attention, and I think it's important to note, that these properties are, both of these properties are designated as priority infill properties, parcels in your general plan. Uh, taking action to approve these properties for pre-zoning and annexation are consistent with the existing land use, uh, growth management, and phasing strategies set forth in your general plan, and also consistent with uh, LAFCO's policies for annexation. Uh, the master plans have been complete for this area. The urban water management plan, the master sewer plan cover these areas. And with the mitigation measures recommended by staff, um, all of the project's impacts are brought down to a level of insignificance. So would like to ask for your approval this evening, and I'm here to answer any questions that you might have. Thank you. Thank you very much. No other speaker cards? No, this sir. time I will close public comment. You have one. The last second here. Mr. Snow, did you fill out a card? Please fill out that card, Mr. Snow. Uh, Mary Grimm, Mr. Mayor. Thank you, Mayor and City Council, for this opportunity. My name is Mary Grimm. I live on Brandy Court just off Buena Vista. And we've been seeing lots of development, um, including the, the development that the gentleman before me previously talked about, and also went to a, a meeting that he had held down a, out at Calaveras School. And the concern I have and the concern of the neighbors that I've spoken with is the, the growth that's happening out in our area, the traffic patterns, um, Highway 25 and 156 are already impacted. My husband gets up at 4.30 in the morning, leaves at 5.30, and there's just a lot of traffic. So with all the growth that's happening in Hollister, and, and particularly in this area, it's going to impact us, those of us who live in the area. And so I'm wondering if, if that, along with all the city services that are going to be required to support the population in that area, if all of that has been considered and and um, and will be there not only for the new residents who come in but also for the those of us who currently live there and I'll take my response sitting down thank, thank you. you very much mr. snow did you fill out a card yes. you, you, I need you to fill out you know how to do this mr. snow I'm gonna allow you to do make a comment this time but this will be the last one without a card And as a matter of fact, I did one for, there were four of the Okay, go ahead manager. with the subject. No, but I'm saying, you all see, they make it look bad that I not do fellow common cards. I did them all. So, for every meeting that we, I go to, 
I'm gonna do all the cards. I ain't did the one C manager. Please go on with your comments uh, about this item. Okay. One when they went in the anesthesia, like the lawsuit we did in this favor too, uh, against in the county. And what the leave scene right there in in the other gentleman, right? It's it's the girls. And what what's supposed to mean what you guys about the for gold plan or city? Are, you guys are we ready for this? I mean, we're shaking all. I mean, we need more police our and fire parts more police but police officers. When I came on up here on Friday, right, the twelfth, I seen someone a kid little low kid, three, four year old, on a tricycle, all going down twenty five. Twenty five is it and I put the my my Facebook Page, Mr. Snow, okay. please stay on this item. I know. Okay, I didn't miss. Okay, are we for the growth? Are we for the development? I mean, I'm for the the impact, the fees, and I we the impact fees for schools, whatever for our, kid, our kids. Are we for this? So let's think twice. The council and all the councilmen and women think twice. What we're doing, I mean, I'm for the development. I work with them, I know what it's all about. But the point is, special construction, retired engineer, and all the bins, but factor, and the sales and all that tax. But are we ready for this? Are the, are the accounts ready for this? Does the receiver ready for this? Thank you very much. And not and not do them all. I them all anyway. Thank, Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Did we have any other speaker cards? No, sir. Okay, at this time we'll close public hearing. Any questions or discussion from council? No questions? Is there a motion? I'll move that we approve and read by title only. Um, ordinance 1125. Is there a second? Second. All in favor? Aye. Against? Aye. Aye. Motion passes 3 1 vote. Mr. Mayor, there's also one for the adoption of the mitigative negative declaration for the resolution 2016 16 for the same item. Did you include that in your motion? Can you include that in your motion? Pardon? There's an item missed. On there. Oh, yeah, and including the ne negative declaration. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you. Um, if, if I could, Mr. Mayor, can we, can we have staff maybe, uh, if they haven't already addressed the question regarding the traffic impact sure. fees and all of that stuff, I think that would be helpful and respectful of the resident. Absolutely. Okay, so on, on this project and uh, uh, most other projects that come before you, uh, there's um, uh, potential impacts that are related to traffic. This particular one uh, would uh, have some impact on the 156 Point of Vista Road intersection. Those uh, impacts will be mitigated uh, by the payment of traffic impact mitigation fee because their portion will be uh, very small and it'd be very expensive for one developer to uh, to handle that. Also, um, other things that are gonna be happening in that area, North Street and Buena Vista will be connected. Uh, so that will take traffic off of the neighborhood streets uh, in that area. Uh, it's anticipated that uh, some of that, um, that improvement may be done prior to this project um, being built out. So, you know, there are some things that are occurring uh, that uh, will uh, help mitigate any of the impacts that, uh, that will occur in the, in the residential neighborhoods. Uh, the, any, any of the impacts on um, intersections, uh, those um, and road segments, uh, those are typically handled by the payment of the traffic impact mitigation fee. Uh, because it's all regional type of improvements and that includes with the new fee that will be brought to you in a, 
Um, uh, that's been adopted or, or accepted by the Council of Governments. Uh, that one includes Highway 25 and, and a bunch of other uh, road segments within the, within the city and the county, in fact. Thank you very much for the update. And, and so if I could I, just. I don't want to have any, since we made a motion, I don't want to have a conversation about okay. it. But I appreciate that for updating the, uh, the questions for the family. Thank you very much. Item F1. Thank you. Um, item F1 is a resolution of the council that would initiate the proceedings for the levy and collection of the annual assessments for the landscape and lighting district, uh, number 93-1. Uh, uh, this is a normal process that uh, this uh, begins the process that uh, will have multiple resolutions, multiple times coming before the city council in order to uh, adopt and uh, continue uh, collecting with the uh, landscape lighting district 93-1 uh, there are no more no additional subdivisions being added to this uh, landscape and lighting district uh, this uh, this particular one pays for uh, landscaping uh, sound wall landscaping and <coughs> lighting of a bunch of the uh, uh, recent subdivisions it, this has uh, actually been supplemented or uh, been superseded by CFD number four. So you'll see me uh, uh, talking about this item uh, three or four more times uh, before it's actually adopted, but this is the time of the year that we have to get started and uh, get moving on these uh, on this item. Are there any other questions from council? Do we have any speaker cards? Yes, sir. The first speaker card is from Keith Snow, who asks the question, can you tell me more about the levy and annual assessments? It says in that, like, how much tax? It says in tax are levying. And, and I think we did this before. And like they said, they guys did this before. And like, how much, how much tax will we get? Our city fund, or where's it going? Is it different kind of fund? Because I know we got, I have different kind of funds. So the point is, I mean, you know, I mean, I suppose the whole major not tax, but I mean to survive. But uh, the point is, right? Is that in the sand walls? Shouldn't be net up because our that naked dance. They said that they on the walls. So we you got to need clean those walls. So if you want to do waste your money, go with waste spending. So I already talked to them on the phone, and I got other emails I can forward it to you. I got the emails in person, and I got those cell phone numbers. I want to talk to them in person, too. So the council, right, and Dave, engineer, and me, civil engineer, retired. So the point is, right, what can, how much fees are we charging? For the lighting, like on District 4, and they're like, and the, indeed, they, we have some districts here now, in like uh, Victor and Mickey, not on the Carson, and you, Mr. Mayor. So the point is, right? Can explain to me, like, how much revenue, how much money, or is it one time fee, uh, light, light uh, fee, and, and how much how do we begin? How much will go to the fund? Thank you. Thank you very much. Do you want to answer that question for him? Sure. Let me um, start off by saying that our uh, anticipated revenue with this particular um, um, uh, landscape and lighting district is uh, $224,591. Uh, 
uh, and change um, what that money pays for and, and uh, it's uh, not nearly enough to pay for everything but what it pays for is the lighting uh, that occurs you know the street lighting that occurs in the city it pays for uh, the sound wall maintenance on certain sound walls uh, and I say certain sound walls because it's not all the sound walls are paying into this district uh, the uh, Valley View area that it also helps pay for the maintenance of the Valley View Park um, so that those are essentially what what the uh, what this uh, assessment will pay for it's paid for uh, with the property taxes uh, yes we have done this before we do this every year um, and uh, we'll continue doing it every year until um, until uh, well if for some reason it goes All away. Right. thank you very much do we have another speaker card? Hey, is, um, Mr. I have no card for item, no more cards for item F1, sir. Okay, thank you very much. Are there any other questions from council or comments? Mr. Snow, you already uh, spoke on the item. Thank you very much. Is there a motion on item F1? Say, so moved. Is a motion, is there a second? Second. The motion is second, all in favor? Aye. 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 Against, motion carries, 4-0 vote. Thank you. We'll move to item F2. Thank um, you, Mayor. Um, excuse me. Oh, sorry. Go ahead. I was just going to say that item F2 is, has been withdrawn, Mr. Mayor. I F2. wanted to do that. <laughs> F2 has been withdrawn. Okay. Actually, not withdrawn. They've asked to continue to the March 7th, right? Okay. They've asked to continue to March 7th. Do you need a motion for that or no? Okay. Doesn't matter. We'll move to item F3. Hello again. <laughs> this is the uh, same item as the finance authority, but this would be the city approving the wastewater bonds. Okay. Are there any questions from council? Do we have any speaker cards? Yes, sir. I have a speaker card from Keith Snow. And I'm not, I'm Brett. I've been asking this with Bob, the Measure E, Measure T, and all that, and bonds, or we're supposed to be financing. But it, I, I never seen one figure. You guys seen another figure. I mean, what figure are, are I mean, what, what's in the company we're using, or are you, and I know for a fact, on the agenda here was uh, about the the what's it called the uh, uh, the company that we're supposed to be you guys supposed to be doing town sound association. So are you here today, uh, Mr. Snow? This is a different item uh, about okay. wastewater revenue uh, bonds. Uh, okay, okay. On the on the water bond bond, are you using with the uh, money for? The tickets. I know for a fact. Uh, I did, I let the met to Harry, and I was here today. But how uh, it smelled like chlorine. When I take showers. I no, no. This it. is a wastewater sewer treatment plant. I know. I know wastewater this, sewer plant. This is to pay down the bonds. I, I know that. that. I know that. But I'm saying, when do you went on? Uh, on like, already? How much money? You said before. What was the name of the company and like how much money are um, how much are we gonna save? Or another one before he said it. Now it'd be another one. So like the same thing or is it different? It's just it's a, it's the same thing. It's all right, same, thank you. It's the city's approval. Same same figure, same thing, same things. Thank you. Do we have any <laughs> speaker parts? Marty Richmond. <clears throat> uh, Marty Richard from Hollister, thank you for your time. Um, obviously, any reissuance of bonds uh, has an impact. We discussed it before under a different uh, heading because it was the finance corporation. Um, but uh, I would like to uh, propose uh, that in the future, um, 
get some kind of comprehensive report uh, occasionally on this on the wastewater project. The reason is it's one of the biggest recurring payments that uh, all of our residents have. Uh, we've talked a lot about how we've kept it down and it went up and went down. There are many other changes. I'm not going to go into them that impact uh, the cost of this. I would like to see them all rolled together in some kind of a projection. Not a promise, but a projection of what's going to happen with the rates. Um, we, um, I supported the sewer bond. I went out and I campaigned for it because it's important to have. I'm glad you're uh, considering refinancing it uh, to save some of the uh, interest payment money. But I think it's important uh, that the people who invested so much in this community understand um, all the things that impact on that rate, not just the bond. So I appreciate your time and I think as a city um, who handles it on the city side, I did mention on the finance side because I don't handle that part, is to get, get a comprehensive report. It's, it's time for another report about the bond rates, about the, uh, about the rates involved and how these, these uh, changes we make impact the rates for better or for worse or just keep them from going sky high. Whatever, whatever the facts are, the facts are. Thank you for your time. Thank you very much. Do we have any other speakers? No, sir. All right. Any uh, other questions or comments from council? I'd like to remind the, the council too, the, the projections for the rates were supposed to be about $120 a month for residential and we've been able to keep it around $80. So that's with the, uh, paying down the bonds that we've done. So your projection is that they would stay that way with the refinancing? Uh, we're hoping that uh, with the increased customers and the savings, you know, I mean, don't count your chickens until the, until the bond reissue happens, but we're hoping that we can come to the council in the future to lower rates. Thank you very much. Yeah, I think that's the most important thing, even from our meeting last week with S&P as one of their concerns is whether or not we felt comfortable with going to the council and requesting um, a possible rate reduction. Um, keep in mind, again, the council has, has taken some, some and made some very, very good decisions. It's the, the wastewater treatment plant, as Marty said, is probably our, obviously our most valuable asset. Um, it's obviously, you know, at $90 million and as we're paying that project down, um, keep in mind that bondholders, you can't use impact fees, you can't use future growth as a method to secure that. So that the burden is completely borne by the, the current users. So as, as we increase the number of users and we lower our debt and we have good interest rates and we, we have been so fortunate all the way along um, that we're in a position to possibly continue to do that. Keep in mind, you haven't raised rates since 2010 and I encourage everybody out there to take a look at any of the, their utility bills or any bill for that matter and see if it's gone up over the last six years. That's all because of the decisions that the council has made. Um, again, we have a facility that is probably good for another 50 to 60 years. Uh, we are building in capacity um, just by normal maintenance. Um, we're gonna be at a, probably about a 6.4 million gallon plant here by the end of this year. Um, right now we're processing about 2.3 million gallons. So essentially you can triple the size of Hollister and you will not need to spend $1 in real capital at the plant. That's a, again, another huge benefit um, for, the, for this community. It is something that I don't think people really here appreciate. And to go along with that, um, the decisions that you and the past councils have made with our water treatment facilities as well. You have a significant investment in your water, um, and those are two com key components that stumble or, you know, that are huge hurdles in other communities, especially of our size. So we have a state-of-the-art facility for wastewater. We have a state two state-of-the-art facilities for treating water. Um, you should be very, very happy about that. So, uh, Council member... Oh yeah, Customer. you know what? And as I'll just I'll just do it too. Um, uh, thank you to Veolia. Really, um, this is something that they earned. 
Um, they received the um, overall plant of the year for the Monterey section of uh, California Water Environmental Association. It's a pretty huge honor for plants that are five to 20 million gallons. Um, once you go, uh, once you win this, um, you go on to sort of the state level. So I wanted to make sure that um, we gave a, a, a shout out to um, Viola and the job that they do. Um, their, their staff is pretty small, but they have a huge job. And there's just a few people that work 24 hours, seven days a week to make sure that that plant runs and operates as efficiently as it possibly can. And again, we make improvements. Um, they make improvements to that plant to make sure that it's continuing to run um, efficiently. And so again, I wanted to thank Veolia for that. Actually, timing for that could not have come at a better time when we're going at, for our credit score. And they feel comfortable with that we have a top-notch quality uh, consultant running the plant. And so we, we should, that should help. Councilmember Friend. <clears throat> what you were saying earlier brought a question up. If, if, if you're projecting that in, in the near future you're going to possibly look at a rate reduction. Mr. Snow, is what please. You're, oh, is what you're saying that we couldn't, because of the reduce in the rates and, and additional customers and stuff like that, we couldn't take that extra money and instead of lowering the rates, pay off the debt faster? You, you can do a couple of things, yeah, we, and we do that. Um, the, the whole point, again, this now goes back to kind of Stifle and, and Stone and Youngberg back in the day by having several, several call dates. Because um, when you issue a municipal bond, you're not allowed to just kind of pay it off whenever you want to. Mm -hmm. um, you have to have, their, the investors want to know that there's call dates. And by structuring, structuring it the way that you folks did, in 2006 made it possible that so that when we did have money um, or excess in reserves or or we receive have money now in impact fees that we can pay down a callable portion of it that's usually important because like you say if we if we pay down five million dollars today that saves another twenty million dollars over the remainder term of uh, the debt and that's you have you're fortunate to, to have that um, so it, it, it you can um, as long as we continue to have callable um, windows. And it's not every year, but it, it will happen when it happens. Yeah. I think it would be, I would like to see when you come before us with the rate adjustments, that you give us that option and, and see what that shows us, whether we can maintain the level we're at, not reduce it, and pay the debt down and save $20 million down the road, or is the, public, is the public more interested in a cheaper rate today for a longer period of time? And, and we work with Steve Ward. They kind of help us find the best times to get the best rates, too, because it might be worth not having that option to pay it down for another year to get a lower interest rate. Okay. It's all about interest rates and yields and when things are called. Well, it's a timing issue. Yeah. But, uh, and this is exactly why we're at why where we are right now is we have a callable period that's coming up while we've prepared to get to this point. And we're just very, very fortunate, once again, that interest rates are where they are. Right. So. And we can do a whole package instead of just doing pieces. So that's what helps, too. So worked out very favorably. And thank you again for staying on it and right. making it happen. So, OK. Do we have any other speaker do you parts? Need a, do you need a, a motion? No. A Is there a motion? So moved. Second. There's a motion and a second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All right. Motion carries. 3 0. Thank you very much again. Vote. Move to item F4. It's the HDA item. I'll, I can do it or Gordon can do it. <laughs> Gordon Machado, president of the Hollister Downtown Association. I guess I was waiting for an intro from Billy uh, or something. This is Gordon Machado. <laughs> what the, what the, because the item has been continued, continued, uh, the, the board of directors were, uh, <coughs> would, would prefer that the item be continued to a date uncertain. And the reason we say that is give it to a date bring it back on the calendar again at a date where the city council has gone through their budget sessions and you have a better financial picture uh, when we can address the situation. Right now it's kind of quasi and you're not there yet. And uh, I think both sides can understand the 
He'd be better off when the pitcher is more developed than right now. Appreciate that. I think that's a very good point, and it'd be a better time to discuss it as we're working on the budget. Any other questions or comments? No, I just want to say thank you for that, giving us that consideration as well, because it, you know, it's hey. better to know the numbers first. Yeah, you you're know. the boss. <laughs> hey, thank you very much. Thank you. Do we have any speaker cards? Yes, sir. Keats, no. Oh, I'm sorry, Mr. Snow wrote a question on the back. Um, the council do what they want to do, but why do we hire a planner? Uh, what I mean by what adds to like finances and all that, and like I'm 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 for downsizing and I'm branding as it's going right now, but uh, I mean it's our, for our community. But the point is why. Why we have a treasurer and why we uh, send a, a planner in that for that and how you got and like I said when I talked to last me special me that what we spend now the money you said you not we not spend no money with the down situation and you and you turn straight up we don't owe them no money word to word by what you said there. I need here to fight, right? I hear more psychological uh, savings, cuts, and uh, financial, uh, I mean, I know more obligations for our city, contracts, where we're doing, and, and, and what the big contract we're doing with the town association, like we did 50 town all for tourism, and I see Julie comes once in a while, the high and goodbye, and right? Not like high, uh, digitally from the county chambers, and we're doing Is pretty good. I'm sorry, Mr. Snow, that's a different item, different I, subject. I, I, I'm not we're saying We're talking that. about the downtown association. Okay, I'm not, I am talking about that, so I'm not there. We said, right? But the point is, right? Why can we, uh, like I mentioned it before, right? We can spend money, right? I uh, yeah, company where we can save one point seven million dollars and the training, like I said before. It says net that network but it's on my page. Facebook page for you know, I'm not say that for politics or whatever with my name on it, right? So point right, it said then did what they do, training, the great cities how to save money, the uh, anywhere in all employees. What, what is your question, Mr. Snow? I get one my question is are we spending money for the downtown association? He said no. Or is it or is a contract with downtown city of Gordon and, and the association. Thank you. Thank you very much. We don't need a motion to uh this for a future date. They'll bring it forward when they're ready. Okay. We don't have any speaker cards. Thank you very much. We'll move to item G1, City Council reports from their committees. Council Member Luna. Uh, thank you. Yeah, I had the opportunity on uh, February 8th to meet with Pauline Valdivia, Jovenes San Antonio, Senior Council on Aging. Um, <coughs> it was interesting being in that room and there's so many seniors enjoying, you know, the presentations that are made there, the meal, and they're just having a lot of a good time. And it was just nice to be there and visit with them. So that was my report. Okay. Council Member Friend. <clears throat> yeah. I have two committee reports to on the uh, February 4th. We had a uh, San Benito County Fire Protection Committee. Um, we had two major items on the agenda one was the career development which you voted on this evening the second was the report on sub on fire station number three at Rosa Moretta Road in Fairview and uh, the contractor the architect has been hired and uh, I think I think the report I heard was spring of next year they expect that to have to be fully staffed 
the second committee I went to was the February 4th Intergovernmental Committee. And there the agenda included a lengthy discussion on some of the items that came up earlier on the, the uh, future development and how the county, city, the county and the cities of San Benito County are going to work on, on uh, future development and, and how we keep control of it so that all the parties are playing in the same field so that we don't have 1,500 homes being built and nobody knew about it until all of a sudden it becomes annexed into the city. The other part that we had was a demonstration and discussion about the aquatic facility demonstration and I believe it was the, if I remember right, it was the the next step from the intergovernmental committee was for that demo, that talk and demonstration was to come to the council and to the city, the respective city governments and the county government so that all the councils and all the board of supervisors can be brought up to speed on where that aquatic facility is and what's required to move it into the next phase. Um, and they, once that's done, then they'll start with their steering committee and then they'll start moving forward on that. And we did not elect a chair or vice chair yet for whatever reason. And uh, we're gonna future talk about regional ballpark and regional park issues. And that's my report. Thank you for clarity on that. The uh, group, the Hollister for Aquatics, would like to come to the council, do a full presentation about what their project is, how it could benefit the city and the county, and see if the city is interested to pursue um, the project. Again, if the county and other partners are willing to do it. I don't have any other committee meetings. Uh, Council Member Friend took care of those items. I appreciate that. Did you have another comment? I just have a question for uh, Council Member Friend. Uh, you know, it seems like this intergovernmental committee, uh, there's so much on their agenda that takes place before it gets to us in city council level. I'm just wondering, is this televised? Is this taped? Recorded it's for recorded. the community. It's not televised, but it's it's, it's uh, not televised, but it is the minutes are taken. Yes. Yeah, yeah but it's yes. not televised for no. the community to see the actions of the no. committee. I don't know if that's is that the, that possible. No, it's it would be difficult. Uh, we'd have to redo the contract with CMAP. Uh, with with uh, CMAP. So let's um, yeah let's hold on okay. to the discussions about committees. Okay. Um, so we'll see how we can get more information to the public. Oh, I do have another yeah, report. Like for one of your committees? Yeah. Yes. My committee on setting up this, the student advisory team is done. <laughs> <laughs> and a great Thank job. <laughs> and a great job. So now it's you. time to, for them to go forward and blossom. Absolutely. We'll move forward to item G2, informational reports from council. Council Member Luna. It's on the informational reports. Um, I want to thank our city manager, Bill Rivera, on February the 12th. I took a tour with him of all the city zone walls. It was interesting to see <coughs> actually all the some walls and the work that is being done on them. Um, there's quite a few of them, and it just covers the whole city. So I was very interested in seeing that, and I got to see it. Um, I had an a meeting with PG&E and uh, they just sat with me and gave me an update on some of the agency involvements and I also had the opportunity to sit with Tina at recreation um, to talk about the partnerships with recreation and how some of the nonprofits can actually work with the recreation department on helping to sponsor some of those sports uh, for the young people in our community so that was interesting um, and just I just want to report that the Board of Equalization again is coming to Hollister and we will be having a meeting with them this month. Thank you, Councilmember Friend. Yeah, I just have one quick update on the uh, medical marijuana initiative. Uh, Council Member Clower and I did go to a wholesale dealer grower and manufacturer facility and did a tour 
just to bring ourselves up to date on, on the process. And I believe the county has an ad hoc committee they've put together and they've requested us to work together. So we'll be meeting with them soon, I would hope. And that's all I have. Thank you very much. I don't have any informational reports today. City Manager? I just have one quick thing. The, uh, um, the county of uh, San Benito is, is uh, Ray Espinoza, the CEO at the, uh, at the county, is putting together a kind of a high performance um, training session. Um, it's on February 29th, and I believe it's from like 8 to 12. If any of the council members or any of my staff um, are interested in going, please just let me know. Um, it's it's going to be free for us. I think they paid. <laughs> so. And if you want more details on it, I'll get it for you. Please send us yeah. all some more information. Okay. That's City. It. City Attorney. Nothing, Mayor. Chief. A couple things. Uh, we took delivery of the zero bike and we're outfitting it right now um, using <coughs> actually equipment we already had. So that won't cost us anything as well. It's pretty nice. Uh, we had the regional um, California PAL meeting at the uh, Hollister Police Department gathered all of the different PALs that are within our region. Um, actually, there's quite a few. I didn't know there was that many. Uh, and we discussed uh, different uh, uh, programs that we could possibly uh, bring here to Hollister. Again, um, with the, the preface that um, these activities for youth would be free activities. So uh, I'll be uh, looking in at quite a few of those different ones. Pretty nice stuff uh, that I saw the junior uh, Junior Sharks one looks really, really interesting, actually, and also some lacrosse stuff as well. Um, again, we're going to do Junior Giants. It's going to start uh, March 4th at juniorgiants.com, uh, and that's the online registration. The uh, registration for kids um, that want to come into the office is March 19th. It'll be at the Community Center, 300 West Street, between 10 a.m. And, and 12 noon. Uh, Again, I'm asking for community volunteers for that. We're gonna need a lot of them this year. And I'm excited about the, se the season. Uh, lastly, uh, we will have um, uh, a rally meeting with um, all the stakeholders tomorrow. I think we first have a, a site walkthrough and then later on the day, we'll have a, an actual rally meeting with all the, the group of folks that um, put that on. So it should be a, a busy day tomorrow. At 2.30? Yeah, that's the stakeholders meeting, yes. Thank you very much. City Clerk? Um, the deputy city clerk and I will be gone for the rest of the week at a, a, a mandated conference and training in San Jose. Um, we will be back on Monday. Thank you. H I J. There's no business item K city Hollister redevelopment agency. Good evening, mayor and council members. What you have before you is the annual report of the low moderate income housing asset fund there was some amendments to the dissolution act that requires that there be an annual report prepared and submitted to you we're recommending you have it in your packet that you direct us to post it on our website and you accept the report is there any questions any questions from council do we have any speaker cards yes there's one speaker card sir from keith snow mr snow can we get the microphone for Mr. Snow, please? Uh, on that, is that the 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 bag you got in the one that came before? Come on, I come in if I came back watch it. Is, is the low income housing uh, in in that four thousand? And it, and it was was supposed to be for fifty five and over, or like that or the report. I mean, as one report, but you, you know, gave back the one there I got, but not that I asked for. But thank you. He wanted to. Uh, he wanted to know about the money that was not paid back from the previous complex apartment complex. I'm not sure which the RD there was a building that um, there was needed a, additional funding and it was forgiven the loan was forgiven 
I don't know if that came out of the RDA or if that came from another fund. We, we are in the process of negotiating a, or executing a loan. I'm not sure if this is what he's referring to yeah, no with Eden Housing that's for Rancho that'd be Park correct, Apartments yes. and Rustic Gardens for a rehabilitation so you, Yeah, it's project. not done yet. And You're it, still uh, negotiating. The, the loan is about to be executed this month. Okay. The, they, so so the, the there's still a negotiation. Yeah, Mr. the affordability of those units will be extended another 55 years, so we're preserving affordability. And also some of the units will have deeper affordability. They'll be rented to extremely low-income units. Okay. Thank you, very, Mr. Snow. You asked your question. I think, I think, do we have another speaker? I have one more card, sir, from Sarah Frias. We have some concerns regarding low income and very low income because as we see expanding on the city of Hollister, we see probably the most of them in De doing development on the minimum requires of the state. And actually the necessity in the county is big, as we know. So my concern will be why is just keeping so low when the necessity and the people who need these services is very low. The other thing also will be um, regarding very low income housing, especially people who qualify for uh, programs like Section A. They are being saying, uh, you know, some people were able to work, and then they lose their job. <coughs> Sorry. And uh, now we see many of those people, now that they lose their job, trying to get into the program and being uh, rejected by various programs here in the county regarding uh, uh, accepting Section A. So this is for some of the community members out there who have those questions. Thank you very much. I don't know if you can answer that. That doesn't have to do with this item. does not have to do with this item. Well, I, I mean, so typically how, uh, just real quick on the, on the um, Section 8 is that historically, obviously, we've had a relationship with the County of Santa Cruz Housing right. Authority, which operates your right, Section 8 Right, but I don't want to go into conversation. No, but, but it kind of, it, it, does, it does partly relate to it. Yeah. Okay, good. And that's one of the things is that we are unable, um, well, well we, we, we used, when we had a redevelopment agency, we provided gap funding to keep the Section 8 to contract with Santa Clara Cruz Housing Authority to administer the program because it was more efficient. The, and then we did use some of these funds to keep that going after we were dissolved. But, but now they've done a, a we've been in, in absorbed in their, we still have our housing authority, but they are administering our program so we don't need to provide the gap funding anymore because we're part of their area. But but there, it is impacted. There's long waiting lists for Section 8 housing. We recognize that that's true. It's absolutely Correct, yes. true. We get calls at the office. And what this report speaks to is how, how we're spending the funds that we have that are the low moderate income housing asset funds and whether or not our expenditures are in compliance with the requirements in the law okay. yeah and at the time of the agenda was posted one of the things that we were going to come and ask the council for is as a request um, or an authorization for us to release an RFP RFQ it turns out that we just learned recent, in the last couple of days that we're not under the gun that we thought that we may be under. So we have a few more years to figure out how we are going to encumber these monies. These are monies that were left over from the housing set aside that were repaid after the dissolution, but the law is requiring that, you know, 30% of it is spent to meet this extremely low. So all the, all the state is looking for in their legislation is to make sure that the communities that are like us, that have a little bit of money left over from the redevelopment agency, spend that money preserving are, are um, creating new affordable housing opportunities and that you have a plan to do that, um, essentially. So, but it, part, part of the, what our reserve is being used for is monitoring because we have hundreds of single family homes that we require that they demonstrate that they're complying. There's, a, sometimes there's requests for payoffs. We have to, so that, that that's a, 
ongoing activity that affects the finance department, the housing department, and sometimes legal services. And those agreements last for 50 years. <laughs> okay. So this, tonight, you don't need a motion. Would, you need consensus on to move forward? It's just, just, just file, submitting sir, a report. Information. Okay. Any other questions from council? No? <coughs> All right. Thank move you very much. Adjournment. There's a motion to adjourn. Is there a second? Second. Motion and second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carries. Thank you, one everyone. Thank you for coming out tonight. I can send you one.